I wanted to touch on Airbnb. I wanted to touch on short term rental, but I wanted to go back to last week to see if anybody had any questions uh, about wholesaling and anything like that. Um, the idea of, as we talked about wholesaling, and I don't, I don't really want to go into the slides of last week, but uh, you know, just finding distressed properties. Uh, that's part one of that. And then the, the second part, which is what a lot of people will figure out over time is like motivated sellers is pretty important in the equation. In my, in my experience, buyers are going to buy when we present a, when we present a wholesale deal that makes sense. Um, I was always taught, you know, if a deal is priced, right, you'll have people knocking down your door to get it from you. When something is like, as we say, sitting on the shelf or like not moving, in my mind, it automatically goes, so that's overpriced. So, you know, in my mind, that's I've never had an issue of nothing sitting on the on the shelf. In my mind, I was taught right. Um, Max Maxwell, I know you know Lance. <laughs> that's my man, Max Maxwell. I, I followed his down to a T of mm. how he got his pricing and it works, <laughs> it works. It works. I fail my way. Sometimes it don't like sometimes they say no. Um, but you know, the deals I've gotten has been from his formula. That's why I teach that way too. Um, it just works for me. <laughs> it just works uh as far as the way to get the pricing. And uh, are you familiar with that? I think you are Lance Kyrie. Are you familiar with Max Maxwell and his? No, I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar. Let me see if I can uh do uh ha, ha, ha. I had my wife's computer last week, didn't I, y'all? <laughs> um, I can I can explain it because I can because I don't think I had her computer last week. So basically, it's um, the example that Max always uses, right? Let's say the house it has a has an APR um, after repair price. We're starting at a hundred thousand, right? Mm -hmm. That's the after repair value for the house. As a wholesaler, when we come into a situation, uh, we take off thirty percent off the break. Mm -hmm. Right. So it started at 100,000, you know, 100,000 minus 30. Now we have 70,000. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. our, that's kind of where we starting at, right? As a whole. Oh, so then he goes into the average, um, you know, fix, fix, fixing price for an average wholesale deal typically is $20,000. So typically, um, you know, starting from that 70,000, he is minus 20,000. And that 20,000 would equal like the, um, you know, when you do your walkthrough and you've seen what's uh, the kitchen, the roofing, the HVAC, the, you know, whatever may be wrong with it. That's like your 20,000 in essence, right? The average cost for re for a revamp for a home. Right. So 70,000 minus 20,000. Uh, now we have 50,000. And then for, um, I learned 10,000. So the next fee <laughs> is a 10,000 wholesale fee. I always say I never go, my wholesale fee starts at 10,000. So the 50,000 minus the 10 for my, my host for our wholesale fee. Now we have 40,000, right? Mm -hmm. That's the maximum. It's called the maximum allowable offer. Um, I say like an acronym M uh, A O maximum allowable offer is 40,000. But, if, but of course they probably going to negotiate. So what happens is we take 15% down from that 40,000. So then we started like, uh, I don't know the map, my map, so I got a DM map, but in essence, 27, 28, 29,000 is where you're going to start negotiating from. Assuming they're going to counter offer you, you know, on some way, shape or form, but you can't go above 40,000 because that's your maximum. Does that make sense to everybody? Yep. Yep. Sweet, yep. sweet, sweet, sweet. So then it's like um, the, the, next, the next question I get a lot of times is why would somebody, if their home is worth a hundred thousand, why would they sell it or take anything less than, you know, why, why would they do that? And my answer is always when somebody's home, um, you know, so in essence, when, when you have a house and not even saying it's in the worst condition, right? It, it just might, it might need work. It literally might need work, but the person most times don't have the resources to put into the house. They just don't have it. Um, they can't pull money out. They, they don't have no reserve. They they live there or they got, you know, deeded or have they received that property, but they can't put anything more into it. So whatever it is, is whatever it is, right? When I go into a property, my number one negotiating thing in my brain is like, I want to walk them down a path of, of me going through all the other options before we get to me. So me, I want to be the last choice for them. 
and, and I'm a, a full full disclosure. Um, third through sixth grade, I went to North Chevy Chase. It is a predominantly white school. They didn't have basketball. They didn't have football. I played chess. <laughs> And so my, so for my tenant to say, I'm a thinker, right? I'm, I'm a, I'm a planner. That's how my brain works. So my end result is I want them to take my low offer. That's my end result. I got to walk them to that. In essence, I can't come out and just be like, yo, we doing, you know, I'm, I can do 30. That's best I can do. I'm going to get cussed out and ran out the street. Like I already know how it's going to work out in real life. Right. So in essence, my first my mind says is to ask them, you know, Mr. Seller, Mr. or Mrs. I don't want to be gender biased, but Mr. Seller, Mr. Mr. Seller, um, I see you have a, you know, this home. Have you ever thought about listening with the realtor on MLS? It's rhetorical. In my brain, I already know they can't list it. I already know a bank won't pull a mortgage on that. Like I, I know because it needs work, right? And they won't, they won't back that. So I, I know the answer is no, but I want them to say no. I, I can't tell them. I need them to come to my solution. <laughs> I need to walk them to this. <laughs> and most times they're going to say no, because we look at the same house, roof's trash, HVAC's blown, need to update. This is 19, you know, 1970, such and such. This won't list in current condition. And I already know that. So I'm, you know, I'm saying I got to, I have a great realtor friend. I can bring them by and they can do a, you know, no, 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 Mr. Williams. They, you know, cause we can't afford, I know it's rhetorical, right? But my, so I got to get them. Okay. So now we X out the realtor. Um, and then I asked them, you know, but do you have any money in a, in a 401k? Can, can you put money into this to get, in my mind, rhetorical, it's going to be a no, <laughs> but I want them to tell me they can't do it. You know, oh, no, I'm, you know, I'm retired or, or I, this is, you know, my, my grandmother died and I got, you know, deeded the house and I don't have any money. Oh, that's too bad. Cause you know, if we was to put X amount of money. We really could do some, something good with this. And then I get them to, around to my, well, check this out. <laughs> Based on what I'm looking at, I'm gonna have to put in, you know, um, I'm gonna have to replace the kitchen, the tiling, this. I'm I'm running down the numbers, <laughs> and then when I do all that, I'm gonna have to enlist the realtor, and they're gonna probably do, you know, three to three to four percent. I'm gonna have to I'm, I'm walking them down what I gotta pay, right? So I'm I'm not not exact numbers, but the essence of what I gotta do. So then I I I, I stumble into I say, okay, um, you know, I, the best I can do for this is thirty thousand cash next week. Again, forty thousand in my in my back pocket, right? I know I got a little wiggle room in my mind, but I don't want to. I don't want to pay that. <laughs> I'm doing thirty in essence. Um, most times, if if they tell me if they cuss me out off the break, <laughs> and we laugh, we're not like cuss me out like I'm afraid, but we're, but we're the whole time we're joking and we're laughing and we're we have a good rapport. So it's not like I'm in, I'm threatening or I'm I'm insulting. I'm basically saying what I can and what I can't do. I don't want to waste their time, and like I tell them all the way on the front end. I'm a busy man. I can't have my time wasted, you know. So we all on the same page with our time being respected. But when I'm starting at 30, I'm not playing with this. This is really where I'm at with it. Uh, but I, but but again, what I always say: never underestimate somebody when you're offering them cash, and mm -hmm. never underestimate somebody when you're saying um, next week, right? A, a fast closing time. You you don't pay the closing, I'll take care of that on my side, you know. So so when I say 30, you walk away with 30. That's that's how I want them to realize whatever number we settle on is what you're going to walk away with. Um, I'll take care of the rest. Now, of course, most times they negotiate. Um, I don't think I've had one time where somebody said, you know what, Sean, that makes sense to me. Let me go ahead and wrap this up. I haven't had that happen the first time. So we, you know, we go back and forth. <laughs> we go back and forth. But in essence, that's how we get to that low number. Um, I, but in my brain, I can't go above whatever that maximum allowable offer. I just can't go above that. And I let them know that's, you know, through whether we negotiate for a long time or a short time. Um, and again, Max always says, let them throw the number out first. That's what Max always says. Max, I keep quoting him. He, he's, he's, a, he's a genius when it comes to this space. Um, and probably because he's been doing it for so long. Uh, but if you get a chance to, man, check out Max Max for his YouTube, his, his podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of good nuggets with that. But he likes to say, let them throw out the number first. And that way you can, you know, you can figure out how you want to move around there. Sometimes if they throw out the number first, they might be higher than your 40,000. I, I can take 50 for it. 50 ain't worth me, sir. <laughs> you know, because I got to do X, Y, and Z. When I'm finished that, I'm already going to be at 80 or 90. It's only 100. You see, you know, you just have them understand your dilemma on some level. 
it's, it's very important when I say motivated seller, that's the, that's the most important part of the equation. If somebody's not motivated, man, I don't, I don't even think there could be a number I can throw out that they're going to really be happy with because they're not motivated to do anything that, you know, when somebody's fielding offers, um, I don't have time for that for me. <laughs> My my training in like cell phones and my background is like mobile phones. We were always taught don't sell, sort, right? So don't I don't want to sell nobody. I want to sort because it's a it's a it's a numbers game and it's a time thing. I do the same thing for wholesaling. I don't sell nobody. I, I'm sort I'm sorting this all the way out. Um, so what I, I don't I have no idea why I said that, but anyway, motivated sellers. Uh, the number one motivated seller to me are people, it's called a probate list. People who have passed away, but deeded down a house to a son, a daughter, a cousin, uh, you know, whoever's next in line in family. Um, and most times that person that got deeded that house, they have their own situation, whether it be an apartment or a house or like, so for them to take on a whole new house in their mind, while while they're appreciative of, of you know, the deed, they're like, man, it's, property tax <laughs> i gotta pay i got i don't i can't afford this so to me that's a motivated seller because they want to get that property off their hands and they didn't put any money into it so when i'm offering them thirty thousand, for example they don't have any vested interest in it to them they're, they're coming up thirty thousand versus it being somebody who paid the mortgage for 30 years and they raised the kids and they you know they have an emotional interest they got a financial interest those are harder to kind of <laughs> make them understand what I'm saying because they're, they're you know, a little different from them. So for me, probate, um, probate, you can buy a list online. I'm in Anne Arundel County and I go to the courthouse um, and I can get a probate list. And it's literally, you know, people who die in the county. <laughs> and it's like, I, I, so I go and I vet the list and I go down the list. Um, back before COVID, there was probate court. So if you would go to the, you can, uh, you would Google uh, probate court, you know, in your, your county, your city, uh, whenever it happens, you, you go sit, sit in the back and just listen. <laughs> and it's case after case of people, somebody passing away and the judge having to figure out who's, you know, who's the, however you say it, uh, control of the estate. And then me being, you know, antennas out, right. I'm looking, I'm, I'm cause when they, when we done, I'm gonna go right to them. <laughs> And I'm gonna let them know I'm a local investor and I specialize in in uh you know buying you know property like that. And then we have basically in my brain, my biggest asset is talking to people, right? That's my biggest asset. I know the pricing is my is not mine, but it's ours as whole when you're doing a wholesale deal, the pricing won't be my, you know, what's gonna be what's gonna be the best thing for us. Um, so we have to build rapport. As I always say, this is literally like this is customer service. <laughs> All this is is customer service, serving the customer, figuring out what their needs are, and servicing it right. Um, so, my my number one motivated seller would be the probate list. Uh, I use REI Pro. I use REI Pro to search for leads. It gives me good. It gives me good properties. The problem with REI Pro is that they're not always motivated to sell. So even though they might give me great deals and I'm like, man, this is, this is amazing. They, they might not want to sell that. So I'm, while I can see the vision, they chilling, <laughs> they got no idea that they want, you know? So it's like, I, that's an uphill battle. I've man in, in the year and a half, I've been doing it maybe once or twice. I've closed off of REI pro. Um, what I have done off of REI pro uh, is referrals. I have a lot of referrals off of REI Pro. REI Pro is a dope thing where you can go in there and put in the address, skip trace it of the person who you're looking for. And in the search of me looking for the person, I may strike up a conversation, let them know I'm a local investor. I came across the property, had had high grass, you know, realized it wasn't um, lived in and wanted to know the history of it. They might have some history of it, but we we get a conversation and I tell them a little bit more of what I do. And, and they send to me, well, my cousin does, you know, and I, I ain't even know you, you can do that. And my nephew and my, I'm, I'm writing stuff down. <laughs> and off the referrals, I'm able to get some deals off of that. In my brain, I, I again, I, it, go, go, it all goes back to cell phones because I did cell phones for damn near 15 years past, previous to this. So my brain is like, you know, that's how we got cell phone leads. People coming in and sending their folks in and, and that's how that worked. 
this is a, this is another product but it's the same essence in my brain like customer service being great to people treating people well um sometimes i might take a lower uh wholesale fee just to get in with somebody that i feel like would be a good asset as a person you know so it's like am i willing because again once like this is it's my business so i so i don't have a boss saying better not cut your wholesale fee i'm gonna fire you i mean i might my wife might fire me <laughs> i'm not gonna fire me whatsoever like i'm i'm gonna try to get in the door to get to get the conversation going so ten thousand allows me to have a space to cut it i might take seven thousand or you know uh, six you know you just never know or a lot of times when it comes to a title company when they're doing a title search what they might find is that home might have back due taxes or or like a water bill in my very first deal or my second deal i went to the title company and it was a it was an old water bill and they said mr williams this house owes i think it was like four four thousand who, who gonna pay it <laughs> so i called the seller and i said do you know you you owe four thousand y'all yeah. you want to take care no nope. <sighs> i call you back <laughs> and i called it by you know well come to find out it's four thousand i'm not paying all right mr hung up man what what are my options if i don't if they don't well i can take it out of your wholesale so my very my first or second deal they legitimately took four thousand out of my my cut for a old water bill and i got the difference but if i didn't have that ten thousand cushion and let's say it's five thousand one there would be a very little cushion for me to even take anything out of so i probably would have had to walk away from that um you know and there's again you never know what can happen when you go through the whole process. I always say a deal's not closed until it's closed. That's right. <laughs> How it works. And it sounds so cliche, but it's legitimately, I've, I've, like I said on the, on the group chat, I lost the deal today. Not lost, it fell through. I thought that was a slam dunk. You never know. Like you just never know with this type of stuff. What I try to make sure is my numbers make sense. I try to, that's, that's what I can control. Everything else, that's, that's why I try to do so many deals. <laughs> because you you have to flood the, the pipeline um and, and i did um full disclosure y'all weren't on my last but i used to work with a mortgage company green box loans in california and we I learned the thing about the pipeline right fill your pipeline we had to have two million dollars worth of deals a month in our pipeline we had to and in my mind i'm like that's impossible you know six months to eight months later we had we was averaging four million to five million in the pipeline but knowing that majority of that won't go through, it just won't for whatever reason, you know, a city, a state fee, uh, the buyer, the seller, the, the laws, uh, whatever reason won't go through. But the more deals we have in the pipeline, the more stuff that will close. That's how all this stuff works. Um, you got any questions? That's, that's pretty much what I had to do as far as last week's wholesale part. Um, I can't think of what else I had to say about that. <laughs> You have any questions that y'all wanted to ask me? I have a question. So, are there ways in which we can work with you, kind of as bird dogs? I've been I've been of studying course. a lot. I've been learning about bird dogs, and so do you have a yeah. system where it's like because what, what I figure, you know, driving for dollars, and we can just, mm -hmm. every time we're out on the road, we can just have our eyes open for like tall grass and sure. different properties. And so, what would be the system that we could set up with you, where if we bring you a deal that closes, mm -hmm. how we can maybe you know share um, get a part of that wholesale fee? <laughs> I do okay. So I do two two different ways. Okay. I do have bird dogs, and they they get a thousand each deal. Normally, um, when I've seen people do bird dogs, they normally give like five hundred, um, which is I guess is still good. In my brain, of course, I'm working from the ten thousand mindset, right? So people who are I I, I don't <laughs> bird dogs are necessary, but I feel like I'd rather split it with you. <laughs> like I'd rather legitimately go 50 50. So in essence, we would do a JV, right? So if you're able to find a deal, we, we would do it together. And then we would just split it 50 50. Uh, we in my mind, we end it together. <laughs> and if and if we're all working toward the same goal, why? Why can't we just split it 50 50? That's that's my mindset, right? So I so when I'm looking at y'all, I don't see bird dog, I see investors. So we partners in this. We not nothing but partners in this. So we're going 50 50. Whatever you got, if you if you want to pull me in, what's up? Let me know. <laughs> Call me and I and I can and even Sakun, we we've done two times where I've met up with her and we we rode and drove for dollars. I meet with y'all. Whatever well, I'm I i do not know where you live at, Kyrie. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, like, I'm, I'm at Silver Spring. Yeah, yeah. we. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said that. I'm like, wait, he he could be in Detroit. All right, yeah. so you. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably right. so, me and me and Sakul met in Silver Spring. We met in uh, Germantown or something. Gettysburg. So, like, you know, y'all local to us. So, you know, any day y'all free, a weekend y'all free, let me know. We can pre plan it. We can link up. We can drive okay. for a couple hours and get an idea as to, you know, the area. And while we look and I can talk to y'all, you know, we can get an idea as to how to attack something. That's that's what I do. So, I don't, I, I use bird dogs with people that want to be bird dogs, right? They tell mm. me they're bird dogs. They're like, I, this is all I do. <laughs> this is all I want to do. And for them, I'm like, you know what? You're going to be my bird dog. But for y'all, you get learning this. We partners. <laughs> y'all ain't bird dogs, man. Y'all are investors. So we're gonna we gonna rock out together. So whenever we, you know, um, I'm gonna put my number in our chat. So whenever y'all hit me up, let me know. We can set a time. I'm open most of the time. Oh, um, the weekends are the best for me. And then from like two until whatever. Uh the mornings I'm locked up most times around my area in Anne Arundel. Uh just being out in Annapolis. Um when I'm gonna go over tonight, the short-term rental, that market is really big in Annapolis, um, by the water, by the Chesapeake. Um, so I'm mostly in that area around the daytime. Uh, but you know, again, I, I make time for y'all. So whenever you have time, let me know and I'll fit your schedule. That's, That's how that works. Question. So in terms of driving for dollars, and we, we kind of talked briefly about how Montgomery County, uh, we've learned yep. is just not a good area. So, so <laughs> we're here in the DMV, right? Yep. So what would you say would be like the top areas in this in our area to do driving for dollars pg county uh land over largo um dc i was in dc over the weekend um the uh, anacostia area wow mm. uh, inwood area over there northeast mm -hmm. um those areas are some of the most coveted by investors that they, they're trying to put money into it. So if you know, for when you can go, when you have a skill set to go in there and find specific deals, that becomes an asset for them because they're trying to buy it up, as we all know, to, to gentrify it, <laughs> make it pretty. But they need to find more properties to be able to do that fully, and that's where we come in at to be able to go in there and find. Like legitimately, Deanwood is a is a gold mine of properties. Um, that Deanwood Dean area. Dean Wood by Metro, uh, and um, Minnesota Avenue. Oh, so uh, in DC. Dean Wood in DC. Okay. RMK Stadium and all that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually, in PG County, that that one by where the Boulevard used to be, that's the number one zip code of like homes being sold. As for right now, is that because the hospital? The hospital's Wait, is coming. That Mitchellville. That's that's. Um, I think it's Largo. Largo. Okay. I okay. think the actual yeah, it's it's two. 287 something. Uh, but anyway, it's Largo. That that particular area, also a lot of a lot of old homes, older homes. People may just they pass away. What I'm doing about it. I, I I didn't do it, but they passed away and the homes are just left vacant. Um and, and maybe well, mm -hmm. well, you know, they 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 build a hospital out there, you know. So Egg. Yep. That, that bringing a lot of people to that area. Exactly. That exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and that's driving the economy in that area. And people are like, they see it for what it is right now. And we have to be able to see what it is in five years as an investor. We have to make sure we all like, you know, like I said, it's chess playing, right? Just see it in advance. But before they create it, we have to be able to see it. And that's what Largo is it's like. You go over there, it's like, ugh, I ain't doing nothing in that area. But, <laughs> but, for, but for real, for real, that's going to be the spot in five years. That's going to be a hospital. There's going to be a full economy over there. There's going to be doctors, nurses, ambulance oh, drivers. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, people that need somewhere to stay. I told the story last time, me and my wife's first townhouse in Columbia, we had the top two levels and that bottom level, the person rented out each bedroom separately. One of the bedrooms, there was a nurse that worked in Howard General Hospital um, and she lived in Baltimore County. But when she went to work, she 24 hour shift, she wasn't going back home, you know, so she paid a month's rent each month for a place. She was she might have stayed two weekends out of the whole month, but she mm. paid the whole, you know, so it's like when you have a hospital coming, that's a whole economy mm. as far as we do. We yeah, just have to that. find ways to get, to get into that. <laughs> find ways to sneak out a little way, something, and, you know, and to do that. So, um, and then what I'm going to this week actually is, um, is, 
the views that I, you know, you know what I'm saying. The views that I'm gonna say are the views of Sean A. Williams. They do not reflect the views of nobody else. I'm all, I'm only going to give the views of how I see it from my perspective. Take it for what it's worth. <laughs> you might see a video saying something different. All I can say is that I'm doing it and it works. That's that's what I can say. Everything I'm saying is stuff that I've already done and I'm currently in the middle of doing it again. I've done it post COVID. I've done it during COVID. I did it after COVID. N nothing shifted. Like we we moving. So that's understand is creative. <laughs> As in this world of investing, we're we're we have the freedom of like whatever our mind can create, we can write a contract for it. And that contract, if they sign it, well, there you go. <laughs> we <laughs> have a legally binding deal off of something maybe we thought about and when we sleep. We was driving, you know, we was driving like if we put into a contract and they sign it, we they gotta abide by that. Uh so just you know, just keep keep your mind open to like understanding we do creative financing in every sense of the term. Um, I'm a fan of controlling property. I'm I'm not a fan as much as owning the property. I was I was always taught like to control the cash flow on a property is more you have more power than actually owning the property, uh, you know, and then controlling the cash is so much with that. But when you when you just control the cash flow, you know, and don't have to worry about the, the you know, the mortgage and the this and the that and that, you know, for, for me, it's, it's freedom. Um, it's still stressful because you still invest in you still you still put up your money right so anytime you put up money is is that it's that nerve of, you know if you're not used to it so that's still there but for me there's always an out in all of my deals so that that includes my Airbnb deals that includes my short-term rental deals um you know so that's just to give um so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to share my screen this is the part where my computer acts crazy y'all bear with me please please bear with me I'm gonna try to do this <laughs> again um i don't have a, a windows or a mac i got a chromebook um bear with me y'all <laughs> i'm gonna pull up these slides and we'll see how this work out this week so uh but i can still hear you i can't see something just let me know question yes ma'am oh going back to the example is it maxwell is that the gentleman? yeah max maxwell mm -hmm. the 100k is that number from like the comps that you pull is that like what you're right, about. right. That's that will be the comps that you pull. Whatever that, whatever the comps are, would be the ARV. Um, yeah. So the hundred thousand he uses, I'm assuming, because this is an easy number. Uh, but you know, in, in Montgomery County, shucks, I think those average homes can be two fifty to three hundred thousand. You know, ARV sometimes, depending on what what neighborhood you're in. Um, I know where like, I'm at. But that's hmm? like after if. That's after not, repair, not right. like distressed right. homes. That's after repairs. If an investor came in, the home yeah. would be worth that. Yeah, okay. man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the ARV. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, can I see that owner finance? So mm -hmm. All right. So far, so good. It's going slow, but we still tracking. All right. My battery is half. Uh, okay. This one looks slow. So basically, this week is going to be. Obviously, finances, sublease, and um, to present mode. So I have to work off of. Can y'all see that? Well, hold on. Sorry, it's still loading. Uh, uh, uh. Can y'all see that? Yeah, yeah I see it. Yeah. yeah. Sweet, 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 sweet. So, owner finance sublease. My wife. I'm gonna always shout her out because I love her. But she 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 does the visuals on these slides. <laughs> That's why you have the, the nice little soft purple and, and, and the lilac. That's my wife. Don't judge me for this. <laughs> Don't judge me for that. But anyway, so this week, owner finance and subleasing, right? This is the way that I did these courses in my brain. Um, I did it the way that I, that I did it, right? I didn't have money coming into it. So I learned wholesaling um, and I built up wholesale capital and then I think I, I listened to a podcast with Max Maxwell um, and he had a guy that was talking about owner finance and about, uh, you know, sub two deals. I, I listened to that and I took my little money with wholesaling and I, you know, like everything I did is like a, a stair steps. So this is like, th this is the part two of what I did for my own investing. So again, everything I'm going through isn't how you need to do it. This is just how my brain works. Right. So 
the last the last thing might be multi units next week. You might do multi units first, depending on what you you know. Of course, so I just want to make sure I'm. This is no by by no means is this the the law for what anybody has to do. Uh, so a lot of that looks it looks like for sale by owners. So we're investors. I keep saying that right. Wholesaling is what's called um, an exit strategy. The same way fix and flip, the same way Airbnb. These are all called exit strategies. When somebody asks me what I what I am and what I do, I'm a real estate investor, and I might and I use exit strategies on certain deals depending on how that makes sense for me um on the back end like depending on what strategy i'm looking to do just you know i, I don't think i told y'all because y'all weren't on last week so where i'm at now i'm in, i'm into multi-unit investing that's where i'm at that's what i sp spend my days doing um i'm doing this to teach you know the 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 uh, the wholesale i got back into wholesaling because I, I was teaching it and I said, let me get back into it. <laughs> so I jumped back into it, but I'm most of my days is I'm doing 10 units or above investing. Um, I got one, I got a multi-unit in Memphis that's 18 units and I'm working on one in DC. That's a couple of uh, six units, Alabama. So I'm trying to get a multiple, I'm trying to get a hundred units by next year, I mean a hundred doors, a um, hundred addresses, if you will. So that's my personal goal, right? Cause I, because my goal, in four years is to retire from doing anything. Then I'm gonna be in somebody's gym, preferably, preferably my gym, um, coaching basketball. So my exit strategy and my out is coaching kids. Uh, 13, 14, 15 years old at first, I'm gonna see them through high school. I'm gonna double back to, you know, to refill the kids. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up having each grade spoken for. Um, we're gonna have an AAU kind of squad. I'm gonna have financing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach them uh, business ownership. I'm gonna teach them about themselves um, through basketball. That's gonna be my thing. So you know, I'm 38 right now. So at four years, so at 42, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out the game. So me building my passive income is very important to me. That's why I'm so aggressive in what I'm what I'm investing in, and that's why I'm doing multi units of 10 units and above because I want to have those bulk. You know, I think about it like football, like bulk yards down the field. Um, 10 units here. 18 units here. I did, you know, two properties, that's 28 units just off of two properties. That's how I want to keep building uh, my passive income. Uh, just, just I, so when I'm talking and when I talk about me retiring is random, right? But that's, my brain is stuck in that perspective. But I do have properties that I still do Airbnb and that I have rent to own on. So when you see for sale by owners, that's what we do. People that sell their home, but don't have a realtor. They don't have Keller Williams. They don't have Wiker. They, you know, they don't. They don't have an actual company. They're doing it themselves because when you have somebody that's doing their own uh, selling, at that point you can negotiate with the owner directly and not have to deal with the broker's company uh, or the realtor trying to put it. You know, get their three to six percent. Uh, you deal directly with the homeowner, so you're able to have more wiggle room. And again. You're not stuck to like the uh, the brokerage company and the realtor. They had to get their realtor, you know, real estate license. So they had to go and, and abide by the state of Maryland, like the rules and regulations. So they so they have to like stay in a box. And what everything we do for the most part is outside that box. <laughs> Our you know money is never well not never but rarely going to be made inside of a structure that's regular. We're going to be outside of that. Um. So owner financing is basically a transaction in where the prop the property seller uh, finances the purchase directly through them uh, and doesn't include the bank. So in layman's terms, the way that I've done my my actual deals, the person that taught me the mindset of these properties are he was like the first thing he said to me, Sean. I mean, I mean, y'all. He said, Sean, you know how you find the ugly homes for wholesaling. I was like, yeah, he said, how hard is it to find, um, you know, ugly homes, you know, and, and y'all know Montgomery County is very, it's very hard to find a home that's ugly, you know, cause that's that, you know, they have rules and regulations. They'll find you to, you know, they have a structure in place. So he said, this structure right here is for the, for the pretty homes. <laughs> and he said, most times you'll find 95% pretty homes, you know, so you have more of a, more of a, a playground with this. So when, when he was breaking it down to me, he basically was saying 
every time you find a place that's for sale by owner, you can legitimately go in there um, and negotiate a uh, you know a, a lease agreement saying I'm going to Sean's going to lease um, an apartment or their house from this couple right here. Uh, let's say let's say their mortgage is two thousand a month. Let's just say that's two thousand a month. So what so what I would do in, in a for sale by owner or um, when I do my rent to own type of scenarios, I always offer two fifty to three hundred more than what they than what they're paying. Um, you know, I might go to four to five hundred more because in my mind I have a back end play that I know I'm going to do. So let's just say for them they they paying two thousand a month in their mortgage. I might say, Mr. And Mrs. Couple, um, would you be willing to rent me your place for twenty five hundred a month? for you know 18 to two year term you know and again when i'm coming in i'm coming in as a business owner i'm not i'm not really sean williams per se um i'm i'm a day realty i'm 40 acre legacy i'm i'm coming in as a business so when when you're moving like a business whether it's right or wrong up or down a lot of people take you more serious you know when you have an llc behind your name versus it just being you so when i'm saying something like that in their minds they already they they count on 500 a month times whatever the term of the contract they're seeing you know the the amount of money they're going to take home because i am an investor and because i like to um i don't want to keep a secret from nobody so i let them know in essence i i may or may not rent your place out i may or may not right this this is but i am an investor and i'm and i and i may find a use for the subleases would that be okay for you and if they say no then it's no Again, I'm, I don't sell. I don't force. I don't. I don't. Oh man, you ain't. You ain't. Thank you for your time. Y'all have a blessed life. Like that's and keep it moving. Not go to the next. But let's say they, you know, they don't care about that. So in essence, what we would do is that we would sign that contract. Me being a day realty, they've been the homeowners, um, saying that I'm going to, you know, rent their house out for let's say two years, for twenty five hundred bucks for the two years. But what I also do is that I say. Um, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you all decide, would you rather take the 500 profit or the 500 spread, or would you rather, um, split the difference with me on whatever, I, whatever I make per month, I'll split that with you. You know, which one would you rather do 10 times out of 10? I've, I've never had nobody say, you know what, Sean, let's go ahead and split the difference because they don't, because they'll say, well, how much is the difference? And I'll say, honestly, I don't know. Um, I, I have to, you know, I, I have to create the opportunity first. I, I have no idea what it's going to be. So, but I can tell them it's going to be something. <laughs> and I'm, and I, what I'm saying, I'll, I'll split half with you. We'll go half 50, 50. Um, but then they'll say, of course, cause you know, their mindset most times, uh, I'm not sure if y'all familiar with the Robert Kiyosaki book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, mm -hmm. uh, or even like cash flow quadrant, but as you know, and most times. 95% of people's mindsets are the, the employee mindset, right? So when they hear 500 more, they like 500 more times that by 24 months equals we we going to, you know, we want to make it rain on ourselves. Whatever it may be mentally, they, they have a fixed amount that they know they're going to take home. They'd rather take that safety than go ahead and split the difference of whatever that may be with, with me. I, again, I can't give them an amount because I'm renting right now. I haven't even done... The listing yet in essence right i haven't done no numbers so i can't give them a legit number i'm not lying when i say that i can't i can't give them a number but in my brain if somebody came well i'm, I'm more educated but if somebody came to my door and, and had that conversation with me was splitting the difference knowing what i know now i would have the conversation if i would do it or not i, I don't know but i would have it because i my brain is structured to understand these things right um so most likely they're going to take that 500 we want to sign a contract right so most people want first month and they want last month up front so 25 25 5 000 they're going to want 5 000 to even get in the door and get the keys right again that's why i say it's after building up the wholesale some wholesale capital so 5 000 to get into a door right they, i have the keys it's, it's day one i'm in a two-year lease with this family right I don't, I don't have no idea where they're at. I just know I'm in their house. I got a whole house. I got the keys and it's two years. What I do, because I'm already knowing what I'm going to do with this house, most likely I already created ads for rent to own. And I have it on Craigslist. 
I have it on Facebook Messenger, not Messenger, uh, Marketplace. Um, I have it. I have somebody on Fiverr career. Like I have a whole marketing campaign trying to push this, this, you know, property that I just obtained to the cyber world, right? Saying that I have one, two, three main street, uh, rent to own, you know, no credit check, will check job. You know, I do a full background check on the person and I will check the finances. Absolutely no credit check. This is why this is important. A lot of times when people are looking to get their homes, their personal houses, what slows them up is their credit score, right? Trying to pass the credit check. Um, while we know that's the process in America, we have to understand that majority, for, for every person that's getting the home, there might be 10 that's getting denied, right? So they, but these people, just because they can't pass the credit profile, you know, or, or do that part of the, the game, they still might have money saved up. They still, they might have a good, they forgot, better have a good job. <laughs> to come mess with me, but they, you know, they got a good career and they have some reserves stacked up because in their mind, they want to get a house and they can't figure out how to get past that. So when they see one of my ads and it says no credit check, their antennas pop up and they call or they email, you know, and they say, and most the, the number one question most times is, are you sure there's no credit check? <laughs> and I say, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not lying. It's my thing. I do this. <laughs> no credit check. Right. Uh, but that's very important. But I do make sure that they understand they're going to have to put down 8% deposit um, and first and last month up front. But the people that I'm getting for rent to own, these are historically people who want their own home. So they're more prepared. This isn't going to be the person getting their first apartment. That's not going to be that type of crowd, right? There is a crowd for that. This ain't it for them. This is a family, maybe family of four, mom, dad, two kids, mom, dad, kid, you know, whatever it is. But there's a family and they want to set their roots somewhere. So what, what I do is push the ads out there, market the ads, get the people, you know, get the people that um, are hitting me. I don't know why I'm stuck here. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> uh, but I'm talking it through. I don't know why I got the slides up. I could just talk to you. But in essence, um, I get the people coming through to, to do a walkthrough. And, and before they do the walkthrough, they have to understand 8% down. They got to have that first and last month. Um, and it has to be a two year term. And I put, I always put, you know, I don't put it in there per se, but I tell them you have to, I want you to get a mortgage on the back end of this term. Make sure you work on your credit because I do want you to get a, a more, I do want you to get approved because I want you to cash me out on the back end. As an investor, when we do short term rentals and a rent to own strategy, the way that we get paid is the non refundable deposit. Um, first and last month's rent, and then we get the monthly rent. So if I'm paying 25, I may say like 20, uh, let's just say 28 for even math, right? Or 20, you know, I might do 250 more, but I'll do 300 more. So if I'm paying them 25 a month, I'm telling these families it's going to be 27 a month to rent this house out. Um, you know, they for them to do the walkthrough, they're already cool with these numbers, right? This makes sense to them. So I'm skipping through, of course, and I find I find a family that, uh, you know, that we that they love the home, they love the, the, the county, they love the house, they wanna they want it's wanna be their forever home. And also in my brain, when you're talking about rent to own, nothing is guaranteed. However, if somebody has in their mind, like you know, they're renting to own it, it's it's somewhat of a pride thing in their in, well, my mind, but it's somewhat of a pride because it's like this is gonna be mine in X amount of years. Let me take care of it again. Every, people are people. <laughs> Some people are just crazy, right? That's we can't avoid none of that stuff. There's there's no test. There, there's no thing where you can wait, you know, put your finger, like follow my finger and let me see if you're crazy. Don't work that way. You never gonna know crazy until crazy show up. That's how crazy works. <laughs> so you never know. But rent to own is minimizes the people that are, that are looking for a quick fix. And I'm I'm trying to get the long-term families in there. Uh, but so I got, I can't do it because I don't want to mess up my, my uh, screen share. But let's say Montgomery County, the average home uh, is two, what is it, 250? Let's just say 250. So let's say the average home in Montgomery County is 250,000 for that home. So putting 8% down times uh, 8%, in essence, it's 20,000 up front, plus the 28 for one month, plus the 28 for the sticky deposit. So that would be their down payment to me, not to the homeowner, but to me. Because once we, once I sign my contract with the with the homeowner, I'm I'm I control again. I don't own the property. I control what happens to the property. 
And as I, as I keep saying over and over again, to me, that's the most powerful place for somebody to be is to control a property, um, not to own it, but to control what happens to it. So again, they pay this, the deposit, first and last month to me. Now, be, again, I may do something like, check this out. I know 20,000 is a lot. How about, you know, just give me 4% down. So what's that? That's, that should be 10,000. So they put 10,000 non-refundable up front first and last month. So all, all the time, what I do with that 10,000, that 10,000 goes into an account. And that's like the, um, I forgot, I forgot what the term of it, but basically if something happens in the house, that's going to cover that with that 10,000, you know, some break out in my brain at the H cause my sister right now, her HVAC went out. If the HVAC go out, if I got to send somebody over there, you know, while I'm still getting passive income per month, um, but I do have a nest egg from that deposit that they put down. And I had the first and last month, you know, so, you know, they put down the 10,000, 4%, first and last month. So now, and they, and they signed my contract and now they've agreed to pay 2,800 for two years. So now when December 1st come, let's just say, um, I pay the nice couple 2,500, they get out the way. The couple I bring in, they pay me 2,800. I get my 300, I'm out the way. And I, I already, again, got the deposit. But again, because I don't own it, I can do that as many times as I want to because my credit is not being ran. I'm not, I'm not tied down to a specific address. As, as much as I can go drive around and find for sale by owner, that's how much I can do this. The reason why I said the thing about like the clause in the contract, I did a couple before Corona, uh, before Corona, before the coronavirus. What saved me from being legally binded to those contracts was, Again, my background is cell phones, so forgive me for being foolish. I have a I have a termination fee. <laughs> the, on the simple form, it was like we did that for Verizon. Somebody didn't want to keep us no more. They paid a fee to, to, to terminate the contract. Why don't I put that to my contract? Right. It's so in my brain, it's so simple. So I legitimately put a termination fee in my contracts to say if I break my contract, Mr. Homeowner, I'm going to pay you X amount. Right. That came in. I didn't think I was going to use it to be full disclosure. I, who I don't know anybody that foresaw a pandemic coming, right? I, I don't know anybody that saw that coming. That was my saving grace because if I didn't have those clauses in my contract to be able to pay and get out of it, I would have had to be stuck with five um, of these type of properties and have to pay that owner when I had nothing coming in for me. <laughs> like, you know, so I, I was able to get out of it, and that's where the like the when I say that's their risk, right? That's their that's the homeowners risk keeping it keeping the mortgage in their name you know um that's the risk that they take that's that something may happen where they have to be liable for that you know mortgage but in my brain that's your mortgage this ain't, ain't mine you know that's and i sound sound mad out mad bad out loud but you signed it not me we have a different contract nothing to do with that mortgage um so i was able out of the four contracts i had i was able to get out of three out of four of them the fourth one I couldn't get out of because I had like three or four months left. I just kept paying it. Um, but those three, when I tell you, you know, that termination fee was clutch for me. Um, I wasn't legally um, held. I was able to get out of that. So I'm saying to say, I'm talking, you all should think about something like that when you're trying to think about, you know, ways to form your contract and like, you know, what can I make sure I put into mine um, for something like this, a termination fee. Um, just, just so you can get out of that. And once you can get out of it, then for me, that safety net is, is comfortable. I can sleep at night with that. And I don't know why I went through all that without going through the slides. Um, but oh, a quick question, how much was the termination fee that you put in and, and, and how did you calculate it? <laughs> Good question. I, I picked it. I ain't gonna lie to you. It wasn't, it was no math on that. I just said 3,500 cause it sounded, it sounded at, I wasn't paying a lot to them. I was paying seventeen hundred a month. In my brain, it was somewhere close to being double double that. So I said it was thirty five hundred, and I don't even know if they fully understand what that part was. But I did go over it. There was no math attached to it. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, maybe there should be. Maybe that's something I should go back to and and get a formula when I when I do this to say okay, you know, four times this or five times like there wasn't. Um, <laughs> They're still not. I'm not gonna lie to you. The ones I have now, I just, I just I like the number five, um, five thousand. Um, so it's 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 a number where I feel like if I pay it, 
I'm gonna feel it in essence. So it's not something that I want to pay, but it's big enough in my mind for them that they'll they'll see that number and be like, you know what, I can take that. It's fine. You know, I haven't had somebody yet call me on that number, so I haven't had to go back and get a formula for it. So I maybe you you know just talking to you, I think I'm gonna do that and figure out a way where it can be a, a standard um, calculation. And if you figure something out, let me know because I. <laughs> Again, I'm open for anything. I'm not, I'm not, this is creative. So we all, we all are on this zoom because we're all creative people. So if there's something that y'all figure out that makes sense to you, please bring it back to me. And, uh, and I'm going to incorporate that. Cause I, um, you know, I'm, I'm not above changing my, my stuff around by any means necessary. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna keep going forward. Cause I don't know what time, what time is it? Let me see. I got my watch on. Okay, cool. I'm making a good time. Um, was there any other questions? Bang, bang. Sweet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of that. Okay. Can y'all see, see Google right now? Yes. Sweet. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to show y'all is, like I said, I'm, I'm into Airbnb. Airbnb was the third thing that I went into. Shout out to Max. I ain't going to lie. Again, me following his podcast from podcast one all the way down. Everything I'm doing, I just followed him. Whatever he did, I did it. Whoever he was on, you know, the podcast, I reached out to them. You know, even uh, even me going and buying my place in Memphis, he had a guy on, I, I don't know which episode, but a guy named Jalen, uh, Jalen White, I believe his name was. Um, he was down south. And he was talking about the benefits of being in Memphis, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, being from the DMV, Memphis. I can't see that. But then the numbers he was talking about made sense to me. So again, my brain was like, I'm open for anything. So when I hear stuff, if, if it makes sense, I implement it. The Airbnb thing was off the off the back of for sale by owner. So in essence, let's say um, everything I just said to y'all, for sale by owner, have a, have a contract with them, basically, you know, sublease that out to somebody else. But in essence, Instead of subleasing that out to a family, you sublease it out as an Airbnb property. So uh, what I do, I'm going to just go and show you all what I do for daily when it comes to this. Um, da, 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 I do uh, Zillow. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do Zillow. I'm going to do something in Annapolis just to give you an idea of how I will crunch the number. Uh, so Zillow, free site for all us all. Um, I go to rent and then I go to, um, I go to what? Yeah. So I know I didn't, I didn't bring this up. Um, a lot of times when I'm finding even for sale by owners, you can find that in Zillow, you can go to buy, right. And then you can go to drop it down. Um, and then it should say sell, uh, by owner, um, you know, for sale, that's when it's the realtor for sell by owner. That's when the owner. So then I can go to different cities and do a, a quick Zillow search and I can write down an address or put it in, you know, deal machine or put it in REI pro and I can go drive out and just take a look at the, at, you know, the neighborhood and every deal that I do just as a, all, you know, put you in my head. I already know my numbers. There's, there's never a deal that I do that. I don't know my numbers. So I'm not, I'm never doing nothing randomly. I'm always, uh, again, chess, right? I always know what my potential profit margin will be before I reach out to anybody. Because the more I know, the better I'm equipped to, to, you know, to handle objections and this and that. If I just, if I go first and reach out without any tangible answers and they start, well, how much? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to get back to you. <laughs> you know, how long? I don't know. I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to sound crazy. I wouldn't rent to me or talk to me if I'm saying I don't know for everything. Um, so I try to make sure I know what I'm talking about when I go talk to people. Um, but I'm going to do rent. And then I'm going to do Calabasas because that's in California. I am doing stuff in Calabasas as a side note. Calabasas, I don't know. I, 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 judgment zone. But try don't judge me. The Kardashians, right? My wife loved that show. So I, I watched it for many, many years. <laughs> and every time they show somebody's house, whether it be Kim or Chloe or this or that, or even, even uh, Scott, it looks so beautiful. Um, it looks so amazing. What I do in my brain is like Calabasas is a very, um, for vacations, it's a, it's a very sought after area. 
So the same structure I told you all about, you know, the rent, the, um, the for sale, you know, the for sale by owner. I do the, it doesn't matter what price it is. So it doesn't matter if it's Silver Spring. It doesn't matter if, if it's Calabasas. Where it's at don't matter. It's the, the, the formula is the same. You know, even when I see this 400 a month, oh, excuse me, 4,000 a month in my mind, uh, first and last month, 4,000, 4, that's 8,000. So now I'm in, now I got my, um, I'm a, I'm a sublease it. So for you know, I'm, I might do an Airbnb. When I show you this next part, you'll understand why I'm, I'm willing to go so high because it's not about that number. It's about the ROI, which as investors, what we worry about, right? How much are we getting back for whatever we do? Um, again, I'm not going to do Calabasas. I mean, I, I'm going to focus on Annapolis right now. This is this is the formula that I pretty much do almost every day because I live over here and I'm wrong county, so I'm 10 minutes from Annapolis. Um, and the cool part about Annapolis is that it's a niche city. Um, it's a lot of times it's not popping, but when it's popping, you got Navy, um, you know, you got Navy and Army game, you got the naval base, you have the harbor, you have the mall, like you, you know, you got special things in Annapolis that make it a tourist attraction. That's similar to like you might find that in Georgetown or certain spots in, in D.C. where it's like people come from out of state to come to that area. But mm -hmm. by me, I'm by Annapolis. That's why I just use that right away. Um, so blah, 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 for rent. So for that. So for Annapolis, what I like to do, I like to use apartments. Uh, one, because apartments are cheaper. Um, and they have a, a rental, not rent, yeah, rental office, but they got a maintenance office. So if something go wrong, that's not on me. In essence, I can just call the maintenance office and they can take care of whatever. Um, so I tend to like to do actual apartment complex. So I'm gonna do one right here, right here to see my mindset when I'm at. So on the Airbnb, let me just do this. Uh, Y'all still see what I'm doing, by the way? I do it. Yeah. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay. Um, the reason why I love Airbnb as a as an extra strategy is because you know how I said um, the rent to own, right? So if I'm paying uh, the homeowners, you know what I say, uh, twenty five hundred, right? Um, and I get somebody in and they rent it from me, I'm netting three hundred a month passive, right? So it's a, it's, it's a capped amount. Airbnb, you can get jiggy with some stuff. Airbnb is different. It's a different beast. <laughs> it's a different animal when you talk about um, that same address. But instead of having somebody do a long term, you know, or a or year or two year lease with you, when you talk about doing short term rentals, now you might be able to get, uh, you know, three, two, three, four, five times whatever, you know, you was going to get before. So I'm going to just do an example to give you a real example of what this looks like. So a lot of times, well, well, how, well, how Sean, do you? How would you figure that out? I'm glad you asked, Sean. I'm going to show you. So Zillow.com. So I got this 2001 Harbor Gates Drive. So then what I do is I go to this site called uh, AirDNA.com. Uh, and what AirDNA.com does is basically, um, a ba it's almost like, you know, the, the concept of like an REI program or whatever, but it's a, it's a program. And the main thing is for it to crunch the numbers for you and crunch the numbers on um, the Airbnb for your zip code based on the rooms, the bathrooms, the size, the year, the this, that. So you can, you can get, um, uh, you know, what I'm trying to say, a more detailed um, idea of if this is going to be a good idea to get into the property or to leave it alone. So can y'all see this? What does that say? Oh, I can't. I'm going to go here. I'm going to and I am going to let that load. So, so you discover property car as a short-term rental. Um, so I'm gonna put in that term right there, and then we got Annapolis. So literally, what it does, it does the numbers for me. Right? So it's it's doing it by that address in Annapolis. Um, Forgive my Wi-Fi for not being so fast for me, but it's crunching the numbers on that actual place. So here, so I'm gonna go back. So just so I can make sure I'm not telling y'all nothing crazy. What was that per month? Was that 1900 or something? 
Okay. So I'm going to round up and say that address uh, for, for the apartment complex, they want 2000 a month just to round it up. <clears throat> so what Air DNA tells me is that annually I'm going to get 40000 um, for the year. So now I'm going to do my math. Um, I'm not going to break this. Um, I'm going to do it on my phone because I don't want to mess you all up. So we have 4707 divided by 12 months in a year. So where are we at? So now we at uh, $3,392. So then I'm going to go and I'm going to minus 2000 which was the, you know, rounding up. That was the rent. So the remaining amount that I would net is about $1,400 a month. Ooh. Keep in mind, if I was, the, you know, doing a long-term rental, again, you, you might get 250 300 for, you know, I don't think I met one person that's renting out a long-term space and they're getting more than three a month, right? But when you start doing a short-term rental, now you now you get something to play with. But here's the fun part. If you check the occupancy rate, it's only 50, 56% of the year. So you're going to earn about 41000 in profits off of it being rented 56% of the actual year. So you still have 42, 44% to you know, figure out other ways to earn income from that particular address. Or you can live there yourself. You know, whatever that may be. Um, I, I did one before y'all jumped on with my wife just showing, because we, we have conversations about this all the time, trying to figure out what, what areas can we dive into to kind of, oh, this is a side, this is a kind of a gym. You can run your name for an apartment as many times as you get approved for. There's no database that I found that'll be like, Mr. Williams, you already have an apartment over there on, you know, they, they won't stop you. Meaning I can have three, four, five apartments at the same time doing the same thing um also the more you know when i'm talking everything i do is about scaling up right how do i scale this right i'm i want to retire i'm 40 i want to be out so how do i get this to be with well, not just one time but how do i scale that what i always say is if i just take what i just did the profits was 13 992 you know 1400 if i did that five more times i won't even say in in, in the month but i just say in a year let's say i had a, a slow year and i kept the same margins as I have now, you know, just doing that times uh, five to five. Again, my number. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> but if I had a slow year, then I know I'm bringing in at least seven thousand a year off of these Airbnbs. Off, and this is I, I control the apartment again with that control word. That's very important to me. I don't I don't own it. I didn't run my credit for a home loan. I didn't do nothing crazy. The only thing I did was switch my strategy up. That's all I did. Same address, still 2001 Harvard Gates Drive, same apartment, nothing else changed. But and and again, like I was telling my wife, 56% is a little bit over half the year. Um, but in Annapolis, I can go, you know, to Craigslist, I can go to the Navy. I got I got family that, that can get on base with the Navy Yard and they can put um, you know, a flyer in there and I can, you know, advertise when the when the Navy, you know, I can do off-peak advertising wherever I want to and still make more money to make that go to my goal for the year. Because as in this structure, this is only 56% of the year. This is only, you know, eight months out of the year. I still got four months to rock out with that. So understand the power of that Airbnb structure. That's very good. That's why I love Annapolis <laughs> for more things than one, but just because of, of the area. Um, and they have so many lovely apartment complexes where it's like, Man, it's already on nice. The, the the ground is nice. The landscaping is dope. The prices have been so high. You know, I won't go. You know, for when I'm doing apartments, I make sure that they're, they're attainable. You know, nineteen hundred, two thousand isn't so crazy. But in my mind, I know I'm gonna double that. I just know I'm gonna do that. Again, imagine if I'm when I, if I'm in Virginia, if I'm in, um, right across the bridge. What's that, Georgetown to um, what's that Roslyn? Um, you know, there's there's apartments down there that I know can Airbnb for three, four times what the rent is because of how close it is to DC, how close it is, you know, and the metros over there, Roslyn Station, they can go down or the courthouse over there, they can go on the orange line and, and ride that into DC, you know, so somebody can come in there and just, you know, be in the suburbs or they don't know, but they can be in Virginia, <laughs> right by the water a little bit, take the metro and be in DC in 20 minutes. You know, and there you go with a property right by the, you know, right by the, the area. Again, D.C. isn't year round for tourists, but it has enough people coming in for the White House, for the museums, for the, you know, for the all the museums down there. Um, Georgetown, American U, 
um, GW, like all, all the different colleges. Um, and again, this strategy is something that I'm going to use when the hospital does come to Largo. That's what I want. I'm I was building up to that. So when something like Largo, I don't know what I'm going to call it, but when that hospital does come and you're able to get it for sale by owner and you're able to get it under contract and then sublease that out to somebody, um, you can, you can again, do an Airbnb. But keep in mind, there's doctors, there's nurses, there's ambulance drivers, there's people that have these taxing jobs where if you have something where they, you know, can lay their head, you know, you can get your Airbnb money, but you still can get your off peak money. And you, and you, and I, again, I've done it before COVID. I've done it during COVID. I'm doing it after COVID. So it's not nothing where, where it went away. We're like, you know what, man, that was hot last year, but it's not really popping no more. This is today, whatever today is, the 11th of November. This is the address is, you know, in, in Annapolis. It's legitimately, and it's not 100%. So one of the downtime sides to short-term rentals, actually, I'm going to go back into the slides. So let me stop. Hey, off. Hey, yes, sir. One thing. I think the house is already built, man. I think it's already It is? Done. It could be. I'm, I haven't been over there in a minute. I ain't going to lie to you. That's not yeah, my I area. Think, I think, yeah, uh, I think it is. I think it is. Because the last time, the, you know, they had uh, the boulevards already gone. Yeah. The last time I went there, there was a big hole. <laughs> there was a big hole in the ground. Um, so I haven't, I don't think I've been there since last, last Father's Day, my father-in-law. Um, but yeah, so I'm a matter of fact, now I'm going to go by there tomorrow to check it out. But what I do know is that that area, there's a lot of people that are motivated to get out of their situation. And, and when we know how to locate them and present them with a, with a, something that benefits them and us, of course, right. But benefits them that might, that might motivate them to, you know, um, so I didn't bring it up on the last thing, but some of that down payment that the people pay you on a on the um for sale by owner, sometimes I do that. I might not do four percent, but that eight percent, I might pack up like five or six thousand and give it to the homeowner for relocation fees. So I might help them relocate with the deposit money I just got from somebody I'm gonna rent it to. So again, the money's coming in, but we we just moving it around. <laughs> It's all legal. It's, I sound like a like a racket, but it's legitimately it's it's a it works. I, I've done it. I'm doing it now. Done it before. We'll continue to do it. Right. My mindset is to how to keep my money out of it. One thing I can't avoid. I got to pay first and last month. That's what I have to pay to get into a property. So in your mind, just knowing your mind, you're gonna have to pay. If you do this, you're gonna have to pay first and last month. If you get into an apartment based on your credit, you won't have to do something like that. You know, come out with something. But once you in it you can get all that back. And then once you get it back, you'll start profiting going forward. And then from that point, you're in profit mode on that address as a, you know, discretion. Uh, let me pull that thing back up. John, a few questions for you. Property yes, management sir. regarding your Airbnb, are you managing it or do you hire a property manager to manage your Airbnb? I'm doing my own management for my Airbnb. Are you using like keypads or something or like keypads? Yep, I'm doing keypads. Yep. Okay, I'm, got you. A lot of times when I'm finding the properties, I'm I'm finding the ones that are more technically sound. Okay. So they already have stuff to make it easy already. So when I'm, you know, that's also how I decide who I want to stop and talk to. Um, if a house is old and a house and, it, and it's going to need a lot for me, I don't mess with it. And if for my, you know, for my strategy. I want to walk up and, and you know see the neighborhood, and I want to see that um, what do you call that thing? The 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 nest, the um the alarm, you know the, uh, the ring. I want to see a neighborhood where or a house where it has technology in it, you know, a keypad. Then I know, okay, I can I can go in here and I can make a good deal. You know, I I know I'm cutting costs here and I'm cutting costs there. Mm -hmm. just, yeah. You know, how about this? How about with the, when when you're doing Airbnb on the apartments? Have you found that some apartments don't allow Airbnb? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So it's not, pretty why it's not pretty acceptable in, in these apartments. Yes. What I have found in some cities, I don't know why I'm yelling at y'all. Oh, what I have found <laughs> is that some areas, Airbnb is a constant fight with the city council. Right, okay. So what I will say is before you get into an area and try to really get into that, make sure you research the, the you know, like for example, I'm in Anne Arundel County. Anne Arundel County uh, is they're they're fighting Airbnb. But in Annapolis, the city of Annapolis is free fall. <laughs> it's different from, and, and it's the same county. It's Annapolis is still Anne Arundel County, but the city's different. And though, and what I've figured out in my brain, those homeowners 
um, they don't want the city to tell them how they can make money in Annapolis. So they're fighting and they're winning because they got bread, because these are the, the county executives that live out in Annapolis, that live out in um, Crownsville, that, that live in this area that are more, you know, the home value might be 750 to a million for a home. So, so they're fighting and they're winning. I do understand every month there's a chance it might be different, right? So you, so you have to, this is one of the things where you have to be a student of this. Right. Um, just make sure you're in, you know, you're researching the county, the city that you want to get into. That That's as I was going to go into like the slides. One of the downsides to that short term, the Airbnb was that um, city regulations, they change. Um, I haven't had an issue yet in the DMV. I haven't had one yet. Not saying they won't be one day. I haven't had one yet. But full disclosure, you know, they're fighting the same way they're, you know, like in California, um, man, they got not got rid of Uber and Lyft, but they're regulating it in a right. different way, you know, and they want to get a, a piece of that. And right now, the Airbnb, everything I just said to y'all has nothing to do with the county. Like I'm, I'm dealing with the homeowner and as a county, they're trying to get a piece of that. And that becomes where they try to get in the way of this structure because they want to get in somehow um on it or or they'll say something like the only person that can do an airbnb is the home owner well i i don't own it i'm subleasing it again me and the owner on the same page we're gonna it's the city that becomes the hater at that point you know like that's why i love annapolis because the people who are fighting for that to stay the same they they're of a wealth status that they're winning they have the bread to put toward the the lobbyists in that in the cities where I don't think it's going to, you know, die no time soon. I don't do too much outside of Annapolis in my area because I'm not confident in a Glen Burnie. It's a different class of, of citizen. Um, and I, I can't see them fighting and, and them caring. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Burn, they're going to be like, whatever, y'all. I'm, it's a wrap for y'all. Like, you know, they don't have any backing in the Glen Burnie, the Brooklyn, you know, the Crofton, maybe. Uh, maybe Crofton might be a little bit different, but, you know, so. The, the DMV is different, but Desert could be different from Silver Spring, which is different from Germantown. You know, it's like every city's different. Uh, and we can, again, on when we do our breakout, when I'm with y'all individually, we can research that together and see what they're talking about. Just, yeah. just to get an idea of the risk. For me, I'm first generation building something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I got money. That's I'm building, right? I'm We're all building something first generation. I don't have it to put in to put in a bulk money and then lose it. I don't I don't have that luxury. Right. So in my brain I can't like I can't do this and not know again the chess part of it, right? I can't not know two moves down, three moves down, even with PG. Before yeah. that hospital, if it's up now, we were talking about that 3 2 3 years ago before there was anything, right? Because we the the plans were already out. They already had what they're going to do with that with the boulevard. So as an investor, we have to already know what's coming. Right. We plan for that. That's why I always say in this election, people, I'm I'm this and I'm that. In this election, I've donated to Democrat. I've donated to Republican. <laughs> what I have done is I've donated to my interests. I've wow. donated to people that are backing something that I back. Um, mm -hmm. In Baltimore, there's the youngest mayor, the the Scott Brandon Scott. I put money behind him. I'm proud proud of him. Like, but the reason in my brain, I learned by my mentor, you have to pay for politicians. You have to pay for this. So even like he's in California and California is so up and down, but it's like the reason why he's confident and is making certain moves in certain cities is because he understands who's on the, on the council board. And because he's gave them millions of dollars, they're not going to go against that interest. So I'm like, okay, I, I see the benefit to that. So for me, I'm, I've, like I said, I'm in Baltimore because I got a lot of Baltimore stuff I want to do. I'm also investing with a politician, a Republican dude um, in Annapolis. Because I have I have a vested interest. I'm not gonna lie and say I'm doing it for the greater good of I ain't gonna lie to y'all. <laughs> I care about people, however, I'm doing that for my own interest. I'm doing that because dude is who I gotta speak to to make sure that this Airbnb stuff isn't taken down. This short-term rental um isn't removed no time soon. But you know, so I, I can show y'all how to find that out in your area, in your city, to find out who's on the board and how to get in contact with them and figure out what their goals are two years down the road, five years down the road. So you can already know what the plan for. And if you know it's turning where they're going to say, okay, it's, it ain't going to be a good thing, fade out of it. Get your money now. 
you know, get however long you can do it, but then fade out before it's too late. Mm-hmm. I, I, in my brain, the benefit of me being a, an, a creative investor is I can I can double dutch in essence with these deals and not be and not be stuck with nothing. Like yeah. the like the pandemic, I was able to get out before it got real tough on people I because know. I seen it. Right. And I had a way out. And if I had to pay a little bread to get out, let's do it because I'd rather pay the bread to get out than be stuck with it. You know, being reactive and not proactive. You're right. You're right. Now, Sean, then you, you mentioned about the termination fee and that helped you get out, you know, the yep. houses. but and when, when you when you trying to do the Airbnb on the apartments, though, mm-hmm. um, how, are you still able to get out of the, that those leases or how at that you- at that time? I didn't have an apartment at that time. I only had houses back then. Gotcha, um, gotcha, okay. I didn't. I learned that in the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gotcha. And I and I learned that you can get more than one apartment, and, I, and that made sense to me, um, because they, they they come cheaper a lot of times, you know. Um, so again, a, a lot of this stuff we're gonna learn together, and I'm and I'm the reason why I'm I'm not gonna act like I know everything, because we for me we we are all teammates. <laughs> so if I can let y'all know what I do know, that's dope. But if I can say what I don't know, and if you know it, I'm open. Let me know so I can put that into my mental repertoire. But you know, I've never done an apartment before okay. like July. So I mm-hmm. it was already the end of the pandemic when I got into that. Gotcha. Oh god. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So I'm I'm learning. <laughs> I've learned it. I've learned. I hope enough and else. You know, in Maryland, they got the um going back to step one. It looked like that's for bars and for restaurants. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to go dip into like closing the state down. But I can't front. I'm I'm watching that you know that part of the state that news every day um throughout the day <laughs> because if if maryland is shut down again like the whole state in essence i do airbnb right. that's travel who won't travel when the state you know it's like i have to be aware of what my again that's why i supported hogan <laughs> i put money behind him. like again not that i support them on everything but i learned about investing in your in your interests right not not to be so emotional, but to be strategic with what you invest in it. So I I want to I want to have a not a phone number because I'm a I'm a I'm a you know I'm I'm not in I'm not in that. But I want to have a straight line to his administration to know what's going on with that, so I can get to get a heads up, so I can have an idea. Um, I've slowed again. I slowed down with this because we're still wearing masks. Like it's it's November and we're still wearing masks outside. I don't know when it's going to end. I have no idea. So I'm not like revving up and like, I, I have a couple, you know, and they're making good margins, but I don't, I don't trust this. I don't trust where we at. I can't, I can't. <laughs> and I don't have it to lose it. So I, what I, what I have out now I can lose and, and I'm sticking to my Airbnb, I'm uh, to my multi-units that I can control yeah. apartment building. You got to live somewhere. That to me makes sense. Throughout this. Hmm. I said, absolutely. That makes oh, sense. Yeah, yeah. Right about that. Good market, down market, any market, somebody got need somewhere to live, right? So that makes sense to me. That's a, that's less of a that's less of a, a stress for me. Um the Airbnb. Again, I started to get more into it because of these classes I'm teaching. So some of the stuff that I'm throwing in and my 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 new approaches, I'm trying now with y'all. <laughs> and I'm in the moment of doing it. I can tell you real time if it's good or if it's bad. So right now, right now it's good. I'm not gonna lie to you. But they, I could wake up tomorrow and they can shut Maryland down and I'm stuck. Um, and I tell y'all if I'm stuck, I ain't, I ain't gonna, I'm not ashamed of that. Uh, but anything else before I keep going? No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sweet. Uh, so the advantages, of course, passive income, the, the ability to leverage large amounts of properties and cash flow. Number two is well, number two and three scalability um, and the amount of leverage, like to be able to do that as many times as your mind can can do it. All right. Zillow.com literally gives me a, a, a blueprint. I can go in there and just do the numbers and not I could be in the basement, run the numbers and not break no sweat. But when I leave, I have a strategic, you know, GPS route to these three or four apartment complexes because I already ran the numbers, right? So I already know how what I'm gonna do. I can leverage it and I can scale it. I can start with the one and then I might do one, you know, in the same, I might have different complexes in the same zip code. I might have two or three, three or four, four or five. Now I'm scaling it up um, for my cash flow. And that to me is, is important. Um, like I said, four years I'm out. It's very important to me also. <laughs> um, number five, far higher rents than long-term rentals from the same units. 
basically in layman's terms, what I was saying, 250 to 300 bucks, you know, when you have a long-term renter, which is good, um, but you can get far more on the short-term rental side. Um, you know, again, make sure, make sure, make sure if you don't hear nothing else I'm saying, run the numbers. Please run the numbers. Don't just go out there and jump out the window. I'll run them with you. <laughs> run, the, the numbers are very important for everything that we do because the numbers, if they don't make sense, they don't make sense. You know, there's, there's enough. When we're in the DMV, there's so much, I call it inventory, but there's so many addresses in our in our area. You know, if it's no, it's no. There's, I, like I told Sakun the other day, I went to Baltimore City and I found 29 distressed properties in an hour. And I, and there was more. I couldn't, I couldn't, I just couldn't like run the app that fast. But but I was driving past more while I was wow. <laughs> saving the ones I was doing. So I know I could have got 50 to 60, you know, distressed properties within an hour, an hour and a half, but my hand, I'm only one person. You know what I'm saying? So it's so much inventory out there that we just, if something don't match and, and, it, and the numbers don't make sense, just leave it. You'll find you'll find double that some you know just being patient. Um, potential tax advantages that's more so when you own it. Um, you know, for my strategy, I don't own it for my for the properties. But again, not saying you can't. I just don't do that for what I'm trying to do in my life. Um, people will always need a place to stay. The disadvantages I think I already covered some of those. Low occupancy rate. Even the one I did in Annapolis, fifty six percent of the year. Right. Basically, like eight months, eight months, you, you might get some burn. Four months is going to be, a, a, you know, um, a desert in that apartment. Right. So it's like it's not going to be the whole year. That's why it's very important to run the numbers. But uh, that's very important that you understand it's not going to be a thing where you cashing out 12 months out of 12 months. There's a lot of competition, but I've never had an issue in our DMV area Th that was put in because I talk to people sometimes. They might be in Georgia. Um, Florida, I got some people in Florida, my, Miss Betsy and uh, Victoria's in Florida, um, Alabama. Those areas sometimes have more competition and less inventory because they're more roads than, than, you know, being dense for properties. Where we're at is more dense for properties. We're the opposite. So uh, where we're at, we ain't got to worry about that and where we at. Um, and relying on peak rent to make deals profitable, that's a disadvantage. But again, when you, um, airdna.co, that's the website airdna.co um i pay i think i pay 35 bucks a month i think i pay 35 bucks a month anyway when you start getting getting to that point and you want to really do run the numbers um you got to pay for it <laughs> like everything else with us right because we don't have access to a lot we have to pay for third-party companies to provide us with um the tools that we need to make these deals happen so um airdna.co the validity of short-term rentals uh, like I, like we were talking about, just knowing that the counties and the cities might overturn something one day and the economic risk, pandemic, recession, or side note or main point, I've said, like, what I'm about to say is the opinion of Sean A. Williams, they do not reflect the opinions of the American government. There's going to be a recession that comes up next year. I, I believe that. Can't nobody tell me nothing different. I've said that before the pandemic. I was saying that in 2019. Because if I read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, in my brain, like the math, you know, just made sense where when it's going to come back down, it's going to be around that 2020, 2021. But even with a pandemic, now we got like uh, Trump doing a referendum. I say that right? Pausing evictions through the end of the year. So what does that mean? That means that the top of the year, he, he didn't forgive the rent. He suspended the rent. Mm -hmm. So in essence, there's people that's going to, you know, start in, uh, you know, uh, January one, they're going to owe 10,000, 9,000 or, or face eviction because they're not forgiving that rent. So what does that mean? That means landlords, um, are going to come to collect. Now they're going front. I'm a landlord. Um, I'm, I'm good now. I haven't had an issue with my tenants, but I know people that are landlords that have all the issues with their tenants. So come January, they're going to want their bread. Right. And if you don't have it, they legally, they're going to be able to evict. So that's going to cause a housing situation. And, that's, and I'm seeing that and not only in housing and condos and apartments, wherever somebody lives at, when you forgive something, they have to pay it back. Even with the taxes that people, the, um, whatever that, that rule is that Trump is doing with the taxes, that's like, it's not forgiven as of right now. It's just withheld, right? There's going to be a lot to be owed at the top of the year. 
with minimal to no money to pay that off. So what does that mean for us? That means if we're in position, if we're, if, for me, that's why um, apartment complexes are very important to me. Um, you know, and I'm doing like the 10 to the 20 unit apartments because I understand people that in houses, they're going to get downgraded to apartments. People, you know, people in condos are going to get down. Like there will be a role of a transition of housing. Um, so for me, I always say we need to make sure we we are set. Whatever that look like for you, you know, whatever whatever that is. Uh, week week three next week is multi unit. Week four is business formation and, and business credit. So I got my my multi units off my business credit. So I'm going to, that's why it's important for me that I talk about that because without business credit, I wouldn't be doing multi-unit investing. Without doing multi-unit investing, I wouldn't be setting up these high passive income streams. But because I'm I'm able to, to you know, to maximize my businesses to be able to pull a half a million from here, 400,000 from there, and then take that 400,000 and go to Memphis and buy, and check me out, buy something, you know, for 290 um, cash and just pay back what I owe at one, I think it's 1.2% I'm paying back. I'm, that's not a loan from Bank of America. That's not Wells Fargo. It's it's a loan that specifically, um, they give out small business loans. So it's different from a traditional bank, right? So it's very small APR rates. So I'm able to get the rents for my, you know, for my cash flow, pay my debt and live like that and just pocket the cash flow. But I'm pocketing maybe seven to 8,000 per building. You know, that's why it's very important to me. So in Memphis, if somebody's down there and they get evicted from their house or put out their condo, whatever, I got units, you know, who's to say that, I, you know, I, I don't want to wish that on nobody, but understanding that for me, I want to have more buildings by January. Um, and I'm going to have these, I'm going to have these um, for sale by owners set up. I'm going to have more of those come January, February, March. There will be an exchange of wealth. I've, I missed the one back in, um, what was that, 08, 06, 07? There was one, I think, in 01, 02. Um, I'm not missing this one. Like, when this new one come, when it's like whatever it's going to be, not the pandemic that we're in now, but this real recession, when that hit and stuff is dropping and people are able to purchase buildings on 50%, you know, percent on the, that's when we got to get in stuff like that. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, risk of new regulations. Again, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow when I wake up. I got a, I got an alert on my phone from Anne Arundel County. Um, whenever it go off, I look. <laughs> I'm nervous, yo. I ain't going to lie to y'all. Never know. Um, just never know. Short-term renting, not a, not legal or allowed everywhere. Um, it's just a matter of checking the rule books in your city or state or county. But like I said, we can knock that out. Haven't had an issue in Maryland yet, and I think we all in Maryland, so we all get to go here. Uh, higher maintenance and property management burden. That's real. Some of the reasons, you know, like when I say the wholesale, right? Some of the things about finding a motivated seller is finding out what they need to, you know, um, they don't have any money to put in. So I, here I come offering them a way out. So when I go to do a short-term rental, a lot of times like, well, you know, why, why would they go with you? Why wouldn't they just sell it? Well, one, um, that's a good question. Uh, but also maybe I go to, I go to, to, um, not zoom, what's it called? Zillow. And I look and try to find properties that are like for sale for 180 days and above places that are like on the market, but can't sell for some reason. I don't know why they can't sell, but I'm seeing it right. Cause Zillow is snitching. <laughs> so I can see it's not selling. So my job is to skip trace the person and find out what's going on in that property. In my mind, I'm already knowing what I want to do with it, but I want to know the history of it. Same concept for wholesaling, same concept for short-term rentals, right? Uh, but some of the, what I have is that I let the homeowner know if something goes out on this property, I'm going to pay for it. Just know you're going to get whatever we agreed upon and you you don't worry about nothing. I'm taking care of whatever happens in this house. I'm saying that because in my mind, I'm subleasing and I'm getting a deposit of 8% of this home price. So I have a... and and realistically how often does something go out like like it's, it's stuff goes out but it's not every month so if something does go out i do have a cushion and i got i got people all right i, I know people that maybe can cut my price down and you know and they're bonded and you know and they have a um they have insurance so they you know so they're good but i make it where the homeowner doesn't take those risks financially i'm taking it so that's that's more of a like okay let me go ahead and do this deal with this man 
And also I'm coming in as a business and not Sean, and I'm coming in as a day realty, as 40 acre legacy, as Glenmont Capital, as, you know, that's the, yeah, those three. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm coming as, as an actual company. So there's an LLC behind my name, meaning there's a trust level. When I'm talking about numbers, they, they, they feel like it's more secure with that than me coming as a, as a civilian, as a regular person, trying to talk this business talk, but I don't have a business behind me. I'm just, I'm just Sean, right? So for me, it's very important to move as a business to get that respect for these people. These are all like little gems that, that work for me. Um, so I hope it worked for y'all. It should work for y'all because it's working for me. I don't know why I wouldn't. Um, what can you rent out as far as the Airbnb or anything for that matter for a short term rental? This stuff here is like, I think I talked about this on, on, in the last class. Um, there was somebody that had a tent in their backyard and they Airbnb that out <laughs> in their back, like a backyard tent, like a legit tent. Um, there's somebody that, that I knew that does his, um, his his monkey bars, like whatever, whatever you can, th again, your brain, right? Whatever your brain tells you you can do is a good idea. You can write up in a contract and do it. There's, there's no right or wrong thing. It doesn't matter what you're willing to do. Um, I talked about the, the uh, what's that? Yur yurts, Y-U-R-T-S. Me and Terrence stayed at that in Charlottesville one time. Um, it looked like a scary movie. It looked like he was going to get abducted or kidnapped or killed. However, comma, it was very exciting. It was very amazing. It was a, it was like a, a big tent in the middle of the woods. Um, it was like the biggest my house. <laughs> Big as my house, full kitchen, two bedrooms, living room, um, big screen TV. It just happened to be shaped like a tent. Um, people have those in their backyards and you know, rent, rent them out. What I, furthermore, what I, of full disclosure, what I'm trying to do, I'm also going to be trying to do um, a tiny home community. A tiny home community, maybe not here in the DMV, but maybe somewhere down south, I've already scouted some some land down there. Maybe out in um, where did I go the other day, um, not last week, Ohio. There's a part. There's a part in Ohio where the the land is 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 an old airstrip, so it has a, a bundles of acres. It has a full airport on the land. It has a lot. Like it's doable. It has a lot of trees where you can you know cut those down and sell to the county and to the work. So the land can make money for itself. But I have a vision of creating housing um because again there's going to be there's a housing problem in this country right that the that the government is not addressing and as a business person as an entrepreneur my brain is built to like think about ways that i can submit making a difference for people while securing a profit for my kids for, for my lifetime and their lifetime right tiny home community right finding ways to build up a community of low price homes that maybe you know we own them and we can rent them out or we can sell them to somebody else if we can sublease it we can airbnb like because i know all the strategies you know and the traditional ways there's so many ways to do that so um this some of this stuff here is like what's in my brain and when i start to go on those type of endeavors some of the also the reasons why i'm showing people and teaching people these ways because i want people to be able to have capital so what i'm talking about yo because again, for me, we partners, all of us on this Zoom, for me, our partners one way, shape or form. And I believe one day we'll make money together. I, I don't know when. Of course, of course, the JVs is different, but I mean like investing together, right? I want to be able to come back and be like, yo, this is this is a proposition. Found this piece of land. This is the price. This is the game plan. This is the blueprint. This is the this. Like this how like how long, blah, blah, blah. This is how much everybody has to put up. This is the equity. I want to be able to bring deals to everybody and for y'all to say, yeah, yeah, nay, you down or you not, right? But if I can come in with people, I'd rather do group investing rather than have to front the whole thing myself. Because again, I don't believe in fronting the whole thing myself for anything. <laughs> I'm number one JV in, in my lifetime. I got a wife, so I'm used to sharing everything. <laughs> I'm used to not like, you know, that's that's my, uh-oh, my wife, I need her charger right now. Um, anyway, let me, let me, um, Get out of this real quick and make sure I can get back to y'all. Let me call my wife so she can bring down that charger before my battery die. Uh, where y'all at though? Zoom. Okay, is there any questions? Uh-oh, I don't hear y'all. No, no, no. This has been great.
Bring the, um, bring the charge to me, baby, because I don't have um, I don't have any battery left. Okay, I'll come in now. All right, thank you, man. All right, bye. All right. Sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, um, I hope this stuff is good for y'all, man. I'm hoping I'm not just talking y'all air off and not like, making the information, um, you know, usable or tangible, something that we can apply for, you know, for our own families or, or together, you know. Like I said, I, I, we black men, yo, we, we can link up like Voltron and take over this stuff. Like, we don't have to just max, you know, be, I'm over here in Anne Arundel and Lance over there. Like, we can legitimately take over DMV strategically, make money together instead of our families for future, you know, income. That's how my brain works. So I hate to put that on y'all, but <laughs> sorry. Generational wealth, man. Generational wealth, that's real. It's very important to me. So I'm done with my, with my presentation. Um, next week will be multi units, multi unit investing, multi unit and it's up, uh, tax liens. So I'm sure with that. But I love tax lien investing. Oh my goodness. Um, I love tax lien investing and I love multi units again. So I'll show how I got my multi unit. How I got the funding for it. Um, cause again, like this information, the same mind, you know, I, I got it from somebody else. I was able to buy it uh, and it works. <laughs> so if I can give it to y'all and it worked for y'all, I'm I'm this this information is for all of us and all of our families. Um and I'm gonna go and I'm I'm not sure if y'all even want to learn about the FHA, but I have to go over it. Tax means is big for me. Tax lien certificates is a great way to invest your money. I got to think, babe. Um, it's a great way to invest your money without fear for losing it. Like a tax lien, like you might put your money to a bank, right? The bank might get you 0 0.1, whatever percent on your money. In Maryland, for its tax lien certificate, the minimum that they, they offer is 12% on your money. So if, you invest, so if you have money in a bank just sitting there, instead of getting that small trickle, you can pour, pour that money into a tax lien certificate and Maryland will get 12% up to 18% interest on a property on a tax lien that you may buy. So when I tell you um, it's an interesting way to invest your money, but I've done it three times. Sometimes somebody has paid up that tax lien and I got my money back, I got the percentages. One time, it was able to deed me property. So, like, it's win-win. It's Don't lose with tax lien. So that's next week. Multi-unit and tax liens. And then the last week, I'll go into business credit. I'll go into business for it. Y'all probably already know that, but it's our formation. The business credit part, that part to me is, is the power. Uh, and the leverage, being able to leverage your business, again, uh, the important part is being able to structure your business the right way, knowing how to get the credit file, knowing how to get the done and rash you know, know how to get JIP and then add trade lines to it, and then the forward report. And once it reports, this whole thing will happen where you'll start to receive, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, you know, money pretty much. They'll start offering you loan amounts. So my first one that I got approved for was the 450. I keep saying that because I made they, they presented me 450,000 at 1.35% um, on that, right? So when I transfer that to my account, now, now I have leverage. <laughs> now I have legitimate capital and leverage where I can go buy, again, a multi unit. Check me out. I got a multi unit with cash and I just take back loan. So, and, you know, so now from me, one, I'm owner. And I don't have to deal with Bank of America. And I ain't got to deal with Wells Fargo. You know, and I own 100 cents. This is, this is all my company, right? Uh, and in, in the process of me getting that deal done, they offer me another loan amount, 350. <laughs> like they keep, the more I pay, you know, my invoices on time, the more my credit scores, not my score, but my profile. The more invoices I pay, the bigger my credit profile gets from my business. And the longer I'm in business, the more trustworthy I am. So next year this time, I should be able to pull millions out of my business. You know, So I have three different real companies. 
you know, understand when I'm trying to build each of them up, each of them up and I'm able to pull 500 from this one, 500 from that one, 500 from that one. Now I got 1.5. And if I can show y'all how to do that, and we all can do that, we all can leverage that, you know, our business and not have to pull from my personal accounts, but be able to use o- OPM, other people's money, check me out, <laughs> use OPM and be able to, to leverage these deals. When I tell you, I can't speak for y'all because again, first generation building something. But when I see the freedom and the power that I feel behind me when I walk into a you know a negotiating on I got that money in my account, like I got four hundred thousand on, on me right now, <laughs> I got in my pocket. Like for me, it's power over me, you know. So that's the last week, it's the formation and the credit building. Um, just as like a preview, so yeah, I know. <laughs> but I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Any questions, last questions? That was great, man. A whole lot of great information, man. A lot of notes in my uh, notepad. No, thank you. Thank I thought you were great, you. my man. All right, right. Sure. Sure. That's dope. I'm going to post my number in the chat, y'all. Um, text me, man. Hit me and let me know when y'all good, when, when y'all want to link up. And uh, sure. we can write. You know, we can land. We can go. Oh, oh we all can go um, to PG County. <laughs> we go to Largo Landover, just ride around because that's a hot spot. So we can just get get an idea of those areas and 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 um, I'm not sure if you already use it with Doom Machine and um, mm. or Aria. Or you, no matter what you use, the point is there'll be a lot of opportunity to find vacants or to find FT properties in those areas that we can you know skip, go through and, and skip trace yes. and all the fun stuff. So yes, I love. Yeah, I love in the the when when you get a chance, can you send us get, the recording of this session? Because I got a lot of family and friends that I want to send it to. I got you. Okay, I got you. I'm I'm in I'm in the record right now. And uh, again, thank y'all for riding with me for two hours, man. I appreciate that. I, I don't don't think I don't put this like for me. My time is the most important thing to me, so I put that on y'all. Y'all's time is the most important thing to me, <laughs> and I respect. All y'all, I appreciate y'all being, you know, for two hours or whatever. Um, this is me rant, rant and raid. <laughs> I get on these live videos. I need, um, I, need, man, I, I, man, I forgot what I was about to ask you. Um, oh, the, the um, to the group on Facebook. I never got the link, I never got the invite on Facebook. Oh, okay, my bad. In fact, I didn't write nobody yet. Actually, I'm gonna do it tonight. I thought I was changing the name. I'm I'm gonna change the name and I'm gonna invite you. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. Um, I don't know. Did, you the, did you get the buys list? Did you get the buys list? Nah. Carla? Nah. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna send that to you also. I want to make sure you get the buys list. It's very important for me. I want to make okay. sure again this this. Everything that I can provide to help something, I want to be able to provide it. Not what be here for many, many moons, but I don't want y'all to be dependent on me to give you something. I want, to, I want it to be readily available for everybody. So, you know, when I add you to group, when I send this, this, this buyer list, saying my buyer list is your list, it's our list, this is <laughs> it's us. <laughs> um, it's Google Sheets. So it's meaning if you add somebody to it, we all will get updated. We all will see the other. So when I'm going through it and I'm really doing the updates and I'm taking folks out, it'll come out your list too. When I add folks to it, it'll come. So we all, because then I got people from Florida, uh, Ms. Bessie and, uh, and Victoria is in Florida. So they're doing their investing journey down in Florida and they're finding new, new buyers. So it's a nationwide cash buy list. I'm going to make sure everybody's good with that too. So anyway, I'm done. I promise I'm done. Great. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, man.